Good morning. It's Friday, and I'm Pastor Pete Seifert, one of the pastors at Northminster Presbyterian Church in Tucson, Arizona. I want to welcome and greet you this morning on this Good Friday as uh, we prepare to do a couple of things today. One of the things I want to invite you to is our online Good Friday service. That's going to be at noon. And that's going to be an ecumenical service. Uh, you can see the website here to find out how to access that via our website. Uh, the partners with that, us in that service are St. James United Methodist Church and also Tucson Chinese Baptist Church. So uh, log in later on with us. We'd love for you to be a part of that. And in the chat, uh, give greetings to one another, uh, knowing that you are brothers and sisters together from different congregations, but yet in the same neighborhood of Tucson. So what a blessing that is. So uh, I know uh, that there are lots of times when we like a good fight, right? We like uh, to see conflict maybe through sporting events or through drama. Uh, maybe you've been paying attention to the movies, or maybe you haven't seen a movie in a really long time and you're looking forward to. Well, this is a movie that's coming out this week. It is Godzilla vs. Kong, and, you know... I never watched the old Godzilla Kong movies, so I don't know who wins. And maybe you've been wondering, all right, if Godzilla and King Kong get into a fight, who wins? Well, watch this movie and you'll find out. Or maybe there's another conflict fight that you're wanting to watch, and it's tonight, and it involves a certain basketball team that you are a fan of. The Arizona Wildcats women's basketball team in the Final Four playing to tonight against Yukon. The Yukon, I think they're called the Puppies. And so what an amazing opportunity that the Wildcats have to bring home a victory and then move into the championship game. They're underdogs, I know. Well, they, they should probably be called undercats. But anyways, they're going to beat these Puppies. We're confident. And uh, we're really proud of Ari McDonald and the rest of the team. And Coach Barnes, we're looking forward to winning this, right? Even though we're under underdogs, we're confident, right? Well, the thing about fights is that uh, as spectators, well, maybe we don't have a lot uh, riding on who wins and who loses. But on Good Friday, we do have an interest in who is victorious. You see, Jesus, he had been living his uh, life and ministry of obedience to, to the Father, all through his entire life. He was incarnate as the Son of God for a very specific reason, to live, but then also to die. And what we know about Good Friday is that it is good, but we don't know that it's good until we have the perspective of Easter. You see, Friday is terrible. Jesus goes to the cross to fight a fight that we cannot win on our own. And he desires not only to win this fight, but to transfer that victory to us. We who through our sin deserve death, deserve to lose in this fight. He transfers the victory to us. And we get a sense of Jesus' purpose. <clears throat> if you read in the Gospel of John, especially in chapter 17, this is a prayer that Jesus shares about what he's thinking about right before he's arrested. And it is that he wants to glorify his father through the glorification of himself. See, just as the purpose that God has for us in our lives is to enjoy God, to worship God in all of our life and even for eternity, that is Jesus' desire on this Good Friday. But his prayer also is for his disciples, that they would be protected as they continue to do his work and will in the world. And thirdly, he prays for all those who would become believers. He prays for us, that we would become one. And so our life today as a Christian community is in search of unity, that unity that Jesus desires for his believers, for that um, mission and ministry that God wants to send us into the world as the body of Christ in the world, the living, real body of Christ. So Jesus, he is in obedience and he goes to the cross. And we read in John uh, chapter 19, 
that later on, Jesus, knowing that everything now had been finished, and so that scripture could be fulfilled, he said, I'm thirsty. And they gave him some uh, wine vinegar, and he received the drink, and then Jesus said, it is finished. And with that, he bowed his head and gave his spirit. So Jesus, he says it is finished, but Jesus isn't finished. The church isn't finished. You and I, we're not finished. No, the the Greek in this um, passage, when it says it is finished, isn't simply a, a past. It's kind of a complicated Greek saying that it's hard to say and render in English. It, it means that it's been completed and it, it will stay completed. That what Jesus has done on the cross then and even to today is powerful and effective in allowing us to be free from the penalties of our sin, from the guilt and stains of our mistakes so that we can live in freedom as a follower, as a, uh, a disciple, as someone who's part of a community, someone who is free. That is Jesus' desire for us. And so we see Jesus fighting this fight for us, but we can't see the victory yet. We know it's coming on Easter, but today, We understand that Jesus is on the cross and he has to be put in the tomb and we wait for Easter.